The audience knows whenever we have a, in particular, a woman behaving badly in the public eye, I'm not shy about calling them out because sometimes I feel like womankind takes a hit when a woman has high expectations and falls down in the job. You're the opposite of that. I've been watching you. You've made me so proud. You're smart. You're confident. You lived up to everything you promised this judge you would deliver. If I got to the point, not knowing you at all, but I got to the point where if you said it in court, I believed you. I knew you were going to deliver on it. And exactly the opposite with your opponent. So thank you for representing and congrats on, while I know it didn't work out perfectly the way you wanted it to, you can't deny this whole effort was pretty successful for you in the defense. Yes, definitely. And I appreciate that. That's sort of my goal to, to, if I say it in court, I have to back it up. And, you know, I want to make sure that when I walk into court, judges, the public, opposing counsel knows if I say something, it's the truth and it's going to, I'm going to be able to back it up and prove it. So I appreciate that. Yes. Credibility is everything for a lawyer. And that's one of the reasons why this effort against Fannie Willis was so successful in my judgment, because while she's still on the case, I mean, we have a, we have a court order. I actually tweeted this out the other day, absolutely devastating saying the following about her. Um, I feel like this order, while it keeps her on, it's not good news for Fannie or any other lawyer looked at looking at this. Here's for those of you who missed it, what the judge said in his order that made her choose between herself and Nathan Wade staying on the case. Describing her behavior as concerning, a tremendous lapse in judgment, unprofessional, finding she made bad choices repeatedly, created an odor of mendacity and the appearance of impropriety. As for Nathan Wade, who's now been forced out, he found he indicated a willingness to wrongly conceal his relationship with the DA, that questions remain about whether the DA and Wade testif testified untruthfully, and he found DA Willis's public statements attacking the defendants in her church cast racial aspersions that were legally improper, created dangerous waters, and may have ancillary uh, prejudicial effects yet to be realized, underscoring the danger of public comment by a prosecuting attorney. Last but not least, he noted the reasonable belief that the DA is not exercising her independent professional judgment, totally free of any compromising influences, and encouraged at least five different ethical boards and groups to consider the many unanswered questions in this case. My God. So what was your takeaway after reading all that, but the judge not bouncing her? I was shocked. I was very surprised. Um, but reading that order that you just read, I mean, if as a lawyer, if someone wrote those words about you, that's it's not a good thing. Um, so that would that would very much upset me if that order had been written about me. But, you know, I was surprised that the judge did not go all the way. Um, he sort of played it down the middle, you know, split the baby, very Solomon-esque of him. Um, so that was a little bit surprising, but I do appreciate that he made those factual findings. Um, obviously, we think that it was an actual conflict of interest. We think that it, just the appearance is enough. Um, but I don't think that the fight is over. We're going to file an appeal and we're going to continue to pursue this and hopefully, hopefully get what we saw in the beginning. And that is a neutral prosecutor to actually look at this case from a neutral, non-political, non-biased lens. Mm, we're going to get into that because she's still talking. Even though the judge threatened to gag her, she's still out there talking in a way that sounds very pointed against Trump and the other defendants and very political. She's running for re-election, but that doesn't allow you to make anyone's individual case political or to comment on it over and over. She can't stop herself, Ashley. It's amazing how she seems to sort of own her bias. Have you seen the latest remarks she made at this women's event? Ugh, no, I haven't. But I'm still I still haven't gotten over the church remarks. And, you know, yeah. Megan, when someone says that Jesus himself told them to prosecute this case, how do you defend against that? I mean, literally, right. that's when I hear these, I'm like, how how do you get into court and say, OK, well, well, she's got Jesus on her side. He literally she's saying <laughs> told her to bring these charges against my client. That's that's insane. I've never dealt with that. You know, and we're in court and they're talking about, oh, well, there's no case that guides us. Like, of course there's not. Nobody says this. This doesn't happen. People don't take to the pulpit and, you know, say that that Jesus has told them to prosecute, to bring these charges, that she's doing God's work, that she's following his playbook, um, you know, asking for guidance since she is following his plan. I mean, that's just that's a very interesting take and a very tough thing to to guard against. But no, I haven't heard the most recent remarks at the at the Women's Day event. I'd love to I'll hear give, them. I'll give you I'll give you a little sample. Um, she. This was an event, it was held on March 10th, so it was before the ruling, but she knew she was in hot water and might get bounced and was not showing a lot of discretion in the way she spoke about herself, her role, and so on. You tell me who she's talking about here in SOT 3. Well, are we standing in a time when you are being asked to vote for sexual assaulters? Are we standing in a time when you are being asked to vote for sexual assaulters? Are we standing in a time when you are being asked to 
vote for men that are comfortable disrespecting women? Are we standing in a time when they ask you to stand for people who want to impact your reproductive rights? Okay. Sexually assaulting politicians. Uh, I don't know. That, that sounds like somebody who's been in the news. And then once again, she decided to raise color, her, her race, as an issue uh, in discussing her detractors. By the way, she specifically mentioned conservatives, but here's a bit of it in SOT4. I hope every day they call her name, they understand for a black woman, Threats and lies will never deter our work. I hope they know I don't care what they say or do. I'm going to still be standing here doing what is right for my community. So is she always like this? Making everything about race and getting personal on the defendants she prosecutes? Yes, but I, I mean, she has been like that most of her career. I've got to say that this did surprise me. Um, she's known me for 20 years. She knows I'm not racist. She knows that I'm not all of those things. So it did surprise me that she had those personal attacks. Um, you know, when when the, the church speech, you know, Martin Luther King weekend came out, we have a family chat, as a lot of people do, I'm sure, you know, a family chat where your kids are chatting, you know, texting. And my 14-year-old daughter literally texted the family chat and said, this, this lady is on TV calling mom and dad racists. Like, does she know them? Um, and that was the first thing, you know, the conversation in our family. We're the last people that you would call racist. And so, you know, I had a lot of community outreach from that. Um, a lot of people from the community said, you know, I can't believe that. That's just, that's not who you are. You know, that's such a far stretch from the truth. So that was surprising. Um, you know, there's, there's folks out there that maybe could be called racist, but, but we're not one of them. So that was really surprising, particularly since she knows me and she's known me for so long. Mm -hmm. We have a little bit of those church remarks. Let's take a listen. Why does Commissioner Thorne and so many others question my decision in a special counsel? I appointed three special counsel as is my right to do. Paid them all the same hourly rate. They only attack one. First thing they say, oh, she gonna play the race card now. But no God, isn't it them who's playing the race card? when they only question one. Why are they so surprised that a diverse team that I assembled, your child, can accomplish extraordinary things? God, wasn't it them that attacked this lawyer of impeccable credentials? How come God, the same black man I hired, was acceptable when a Republican in another county hired him and paid him twice the rate? Oh, y'all ain't hear me. Why is the white male Republican's judgment good enough, but the black female Democrats not? So those are the remarks to which you were referring, impugning not only you, but your client, too. I mean, that's that's what the judge really had a problem with. And this guy's freedom is potentially in her hands. And she's making it a personal beef with him about race because you filed a motion to disqualify her. Right. There's so much there in that clip that you just played. There's so many different issues. Um, the the one that, you know, when I first heard it, I said, well, she's lying. And you would think if you're going on a church pulpit that you know is going to be broadcast. I mean, this is essentially her first public remarks after my motion was filed. And she doesn't tell the truth. The third person on this case did not make the same rate as the others. And, you know, that's the first thing that stuck out to me. I mean, the, you know, facts matter, words matter, the truth matters, and that was patently false. So, you know, especially since I was, you know, called a liar so many times and things that I said was patently false, if I'm going to get on national TV and talk in a church to God, I'm going to make sure that I've got the facts right. And John Floyd, the third prosecutor on this case, is not paid the same rate as the others. Plus, the, the work is very different. And I've analyzed this. I've lived with this for almost six months. So I know these records like the back of my hand. You've got three different prosecutors billing very different amounts, doing very different work. Nathan Wade bills sitting there. So he's bills sitting in court watching John Floyd or Anna 
cross do work. They don't bill sitting watching him do work. So that was one big distinction. Second, they're not sleeping with her. So that's a big distinction. Um, third, they're not all being paid the same rate. And fourth, their qualifications are extremely different. I have known all three of them for the better part of 20 years. And so, you know, race doesn't play into any of those factors. And so all of those things were left out of it. So that was the first takeaway I got from that church speech. I want to tell you about the Association of Mature American Citizens, or AMAC, an organization dedicated to America's seniors. AMAC stands out today by not only advocating for senior issues, but also by pushing for conservative values that affect us all. If you join, you're not just supporting America's senior citizens, you can become part of a movement defending our freedoms and securing our nation's future. Plus, membership brings you exclusive benefits like discounts on travel, dining, entertainment, and special insurance rates. Regardless of your age, if you're driven to preserve freedom, AMAC welcomes you. Sign up now at amac.us slash Megan. And for a limited time, get a free gift membership for someone who shares your love of our great nation. Don't miss out on this chance to make a difference with AMAC. Join today at amac.us slash Megan and extend the invitation to a friend or family member for free. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.